Hello and welcome. Today we're working on the FIFO inventory method. Now, in our previous video, we did the FIFO method, the LIFO method, and weighted average all together. So this one we're breaking it and just showing the FIFO method. If you're new to the channel, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn, where we're teaching financial accounting. So here are our financial accounting chapters. We have in chapter five, inventory and costs of goods sold. So this is where that material goes. I've got articles, videos, playlists, and I'm working my way through the financial accounting chapters. So let's get started. Everything that's highlighted in green is given information. So let's say we have beginning inventory. We purchased 50 at $5 and we purchased then some more at eight and 10 and 12. So we're showing the effects of rising prices or inflation. Now, we sold 90 plus 110 for a total of 200. So over here on the side, let's do a little math here. I've just copied this. So what is 50 times $5? Well, that's 250. We're gonna copy this all the way down. We're gonna try to figure out the cost of goods available. So here, we can do a sum here. So equals, and then start typing in sum. And we're gonna take the sum of all those costs and so we have spent 2,610. 2,610, what is our total units? Well, here's a keyboard shortcut for you. If you're on Windows, then it's gonna be Alt and Equals at the same time. I'm on a Mac, so it's Command Shift T, and that calculates the sum of the column that's preceding where your cell is selected. All right, so Let's do this, our beginning inventory. Let's just do the math here. Let me move this over slightly. So what we have, we have beginning inventory is gonna be 250. And to that, we're adding the 800 plus the 1200 plus the 360. Now I could do some here, but I'm trying to show you step by step. Now, what is our goods available? Our goods available is 2610. Now, I'm gonna type this in because we're gonna change this in just a minute. So 250 and 2360. Generally, you would not type in things like that, but I'm gonna do it because I'm gonna change this chart and everything will get updated. Now, if we calculate our ending inventory, we can get our cost of goods sold or vice versa. If we do our cost of goods sold, we can get our ending inventory. All right, so let's calculate what is our ending inventory and cost of goods sold? Under FIFO, we're selling the first, so we're gonna start at the very top. We're gonna to add all the way up till we get to 200. So we sold 200. Which 200 did we sell? The first 200. So here's what I'm gonna do. We have two ways we can do this. Do you wanna knock out what we sold and just keep up with what we have left? or do you wanna keep up with what we sold? Well, let's keep up with what we sold here and see if we can figure that out. We sold 50 at $5 each, we sold 100, and then we sold 50 more. And then we sold none of that last purchase. So here's what we sold. We sold 50 plus 100 more plus 50 more at the $10 level. So our total is gonna be, looks like, 15.50. Let me type this in because we'll change that along the way. Our goods available is 26.10 minus the 15.50, and we're going to end up with 1,060 is our ending inventory. So we calculated our cost of goods sold based on FIFO periodic. Okay. Now let me go back and reset my numbers: 500, 100, 120 and 30. Okay, so if we're doing perpetual, perpetual, the dates matter. So let's just do it step by step here. So the very first thing that happens, we purchased 50 uh, before the period here at $5 each. And then on the 11th, that's the next date, we purchased 100 at $8, that's 800. So now we have 150 available for a total cost of 1,050. Now, what's the next date? The 1st, the 11th, we have to skip on down to the 14th. We sold 90. Which 90 did we sell? Well, the first 90. So we're going to take 50, get rid of all that. We sold all that. 
And we sold how many more? Well, we sold, of the 100, we sold 50 plus 90 total is going to be 40 more. So we're left with 60. Okay, here we're figuring out what is our ending inventory. All right, the next thing that happens is we purchase 120. So we sold 110. Which 110 did we sell? Well, we sold all of the 60, left with zero, and we had 60, and we have 50 more that we sold, so we're left with 70. And the last thing we did, we purchased 30. So what is our ending inventory? Well, our ending inventory is 100 items at 1,060. So what's our cost of goods sold? Our cost of goods sold is 2610 minus 1060. It's going to be 1550. Now, FIFO periodic and FIFO perpetual are going to be the same answer. So you only have to do it one way or the other. You can do it the periodic way or the perpetual way and you get the same answer. So that's the big clue. If it says FIFO periodic or FIFO perpetual, you can always do it FIFO periodic. All right, one last way to do it, just to compare, let's do the weighted average. Let me go back, put the 50 in, the 100 in, and the 120. All right, we're back to our original information. Weighted average periodic. The dates don't matter, but just the order. So what we have is we need to make one calculation. We need to take and make a calculation, and we'll do it right here to the side, 2610 divided by 300 items. What is the average of all these? Now, why is it weighted average? Well, some are purchased at five, some are eight, some are 10, or some are 12. If we look at that, that average is 875, but that's not our average. It's $8.70 based on everything. And we might have a few more decimal places. No, it looks like it's exactly 870, $8.70. And so all we have to do is take the 870 times the ending inventory of 100 and then the 870 times the cost of goods sold, the ones we sold of 200. So just to have a comparison, the weighted average periodic would be 870 ending inventory and cost of goods sold of 1740. All right, so that's how you do the FIFO method under the inventory. And so we have periodic FIFO and perpetual FIFO. Have got lots of videos in financial accounting, lots of videos on cost of goods sold and inventory methods. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.